sound check. Do you see my screen well? Yeah, we see it. Okay, I'm going to put it in the presentation mode. Uh, great. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, as Chris has mentioned, my name is Gapeng, and I go with Peng. I'm a senior principal research scientist at UA in Huntsville. Really appreciate the opportunity to introduce to you the community guidelines for sharing data site quality information. I'd like to acknowledge contributions of members of working group, uh, especially my other two co-chairs, Carlos from Barcelona Supercomputing Center and Ivana from Australia and New Zealand Data Quality, Info, uh, Data Quality Interest Group. Uh, a little bit about myself from the working with data perspective, um, there are three distinguished distinct roles I have taken on throughout my career. I started as a numerical modeler. Um, when we say data, we mean observations. They are considered as the truth. We used to validate um, data um, and uh, validate the model and the model output. And uh, the uh, work over there is really to implement the models to study um, process in our system. Uh, Earth uh, data, Earth system, I'm sorry, a little nervous. So um, data mostly I work with are in situ data and uh, Sala data and Gorlick data product are hard to come by and they tend to be used as an initial and the boundary condition. And through that work, I learned firsthand how hard it is to and important to find and use data. And the second role is as a data scientist, I use um, mostly graded data and observation based of and model output for um, an analysis in term a um, the trend and availability of Earth's data system variables, including um, temperatures, winds, and uh, Arctic sea ice extent. And uh, I push it uh, through that role, I push it the importance and the quality information on quality of data, and as well as the importance of metadata quality. And the uh, third role I have um, taken on is as a scientific store. In this role, I primarily evaluate data product, both a mature and a new product, um, focusing on the product uh, quality to the um, help improve the usability and accessibility, accessibility of the data product. I have developed and utilized metrics to exam storeship maturity metrics. And I have learned from some, you know, um, the expert in the field and I really appreciate the quality throughout the whole data set life cycle. The current project I am supporting um, short for impact is a interagency project. Uh, it is under NASA Earth Science Data System Program, uh, which is managed by Marshall Space Flight Center located in Huntsville. Uh, the team is very dynamic, interdisciplinary, and consists of a domain expert in informatics, um, science data managed technology domains, and we have very strong present in machine learning and data systems, including cloud-based data systems. And the goals are to identify and address earth science data needs. And we have a project that focus on data acquisition and processing, data management and the system, and data discovery and visualization. Additional information can be found at this link, including what are those acronyms, um, mean as well as the project descriptions. ECIQC was established um, by cross domain interagency data professionals. Uh, we come together to address common data and information quality challenges. And the vision for IQC is to become authoritative 
and responsive information source, especially on data quality standards and the best practices of the earth science uh, community. We are doing so by facilitating the sharing of experiences and best practices through collaboration and invite a speaker to present and our telecoms. And we are looking for speakers for next year, especially on fair data and information implementations. And we also um, organize sessions and presentations um, at various conferences. And the membership is open. Uh, anybody can join us. You can sign up through this link here. The fair data set quality uh, information working group it um, consists of 22 international interdisciplinary domain experts across three continents and affiliated with the government agencies universities and the private sectors and we bring knowledge and experience from our own domain and organizations to the working group um, and bring back the knowledge gained as well as lessons learned from development of the um, guidelines back to our um, own organizations. So it is like a community of practice. So in this talk, let me get this other way, the data set quality um, refers to quality of data, including both the input and output, and metadata and the documentations and associated software workflows, procedures and process, uh, infrastructure system and tools. The data say quality information uh, refers to information about quality of the states of the data, metadata and documentations through the entire life cycle of the data set. In this slide, I'll highlight some of the needs um, for quality, why we need quality information, if especially uh, consistently curated. And from the data consumer aspect, um, quality information uh, inform the reliability of the data set. So the users can make informed decision on which data set that's suitable for their own applications. It's also uh, established the trustworthiness and one time, one of the uh, working group members told us the emergency organizations, they will not use any data product that they don't trust. And from the repository perspective, we are increasingly uh, facing evolving the requirement on compliance reporting and also requirement to support open science. So having the consistently curated and readily understood um, quality information would help them to do their job better. And the on the general sense, um, sharing the um, it, it, the quality information would help sharing the um, of the data and information and reuse of data and information. So having them readily available, it definitely um, improve the um, productivity by eliminating the redundancy and interoperable data set quality information are beneficial to any applications, especially so for new technologies such as machine learning. And uh, having the global access of uh, harmonized quality information readily available available um, would help reduce access barriers um, for researchers uh, from the developing countries. So we all need the quality information, but it's hard to find and uh, not easy to integrate. And why is that? Um, not long ago, I went to a seminar on quality management and the presenter 
start the presentation by saying that quality is complicated. There are many factors contributing to that complexity, and I'll touch on three of them that relevant to um, data set quality information. So if you are working on uh, providing weather forecast and the time minutes of data is very important, the, the most, um, most of the time you want the data to be available within six hours. However, if you are doing climate analysis and the consistency throughout the whole time series is more critical, and then you can afford to um, wait a day, even weeks. So good quality means different things to different applications. And furthermore, the same quality dimension means different things to different quality aspects. So in turn, the company needs and the data company needs and the metadata companies are different things. They can be different to different disciplines or domains as well. And the third of is the quality information curation requires cross domain knowledge integration. For example, um, a metadata specialist needs to curate data set um, metadata records. And if she wants to include data and certain information that needs to be provided by data producer. So I have personally known many um, metadata specialists have to play detective and translator to find information in the literature and convey that uh, into metadata record. So to demonstrate different quality aspect, uh, I have some of the use cases here for documenting data set quality information. So a scientist uh, needs to document algorithm validation information uh, when he developing a data product. So that's the scientific quality. And using that developed algorithm, a data producer can start to generate the data product and he needs to capture product evaluation information, including data uncertainty. That's product quality. A specialist, a metadata specialist uh, data stored needs to uh, curate data set level of metadata and that can win that particular data uncertainty information. That's storage quality. A data service providers needs to report the quality information or disseminate quality information to users. That's a service quality. So it depends on the size and structure of the project. The roles can be taken on by one person or a cross domain team. Let me put this. So to address the community need, um, the working group, we have developed quality attributes agnostic guidelines for improved sharing and reuse of quality information. To help improve sharing, we have adapted uh, FAIR guiding principles um, that's defined by Wilkinson et al. 2019 paper. And most, if not all people on this call uh, know the FAIR data guiding principles. And I will not go through details, but just um, highlight a, uh, some core concepts for people who are not familiar with. So for findable principles is really to ensure that um, digital object can be uniquely identified and discovered. Call concept includes um, persist identifier, rich metadata, uh, cross-reference PID, and searchable resource. And for the accessible um, principles is for the object to be securely assessed. And the core concept include retrievable by PID and communication protocols and permanent of the metadata. For the interoperable principle is for the, um, the 
object to be readily integrated and the core concept includes language for knowledge representation, vocabularies and qualified references. And reuse goes back to rich um, metadata and uh, the, um, the rich attributes include uh, usage license, detailed provenance. So for the um, object to be readily reused, and it's also recommend that the data metadata uh, meet the community standards. The International Fair DQI Community Guidelines aim to provide practical guidance on consistently reporting quality information. And it is um, development is organized by three organizations. And we start initial discussion in September 2019. ESIP has uh, sponsored a workshop and bring the domain, international domain expert together to explore the, um, the landscaping at the time and the community need, um, as well as the challenges of documenting data set quality information. And the, those are summarized in the uh, workshop report and uh, case statement. And the working group was established in September 2020, and uh, we had the a formal call to action statement published later that year. And the development through the um, April 2021, we had a draft out for community review, and we have received um, some excellent comments and the suggestions, and the the guide guideline document was baselined um, in October 2021. It's currently in the um, maintenance at update mode. And we're also working with RDA Research Data Alliances to improve its disciplinary diversity and working with OGC Data Quality Domain Working Group to collect uh, use cases. The, the latest one is the publication that Chris has mentioned um, that do, the paper do, describe the development process. Um, there are a total of five guidelines, and in this slide, I would give a um, highlight of five and provide additional details in the next few slides. So, guideline one is about describing data set to ensure that data set is fine accessible and usable. Guideline two is about utilizing a quality assessment model and to ensure that the model is structured and is findable, accessible and usable. And the guidelines three and four is about documenting relevant information in a machine um, actionable format as well as the uh, human readable format. Guideline five is about reporting or disseminating data set quality information online to ensure the information is findable and readily reusable. So for describing a data set, we have recommended a list of elements, including the uh, persistent identifier that's resolved to a comprehensive landing page is versioned um, as well as including usage license. And to utilize a quality assessment model, we recommend it's structured and it's versioned. It is public available with a unique resolvable PID. So for guidelines three to capture the relevant information in a data set level metadata records and relevant information, including the quality attributes that you're assessing, the method you of, um, a, utilize as well the assessment result. And we recommend to include versioning and history of the uh, assessment and for the metadata record to use a framework that's a semantically and structurally consistent and following community 
standards. And to, to describe the relevant information in, uh, in, as well as the process in a human readable quality report, we recommend to use a template that's published with PID and it's findable and accessible and recommend the report to be published with PID, open license and include report history and also link the report PID to the data level metadata record. Um, to disseminate the information online, um, we recommend to include a comprehensive description of the data set and relevant information, um, as well as uh, a description of how to understand and use the information. So takeaway is the um, data set quality is more than just the data quality and the quality information should be documented throughout the entire data set life cycle. And the FAIR principles can help with enhancing the sharing of data quality information. And the FAIR DQI guidelines can help get you started on documenting and reporting data quality information. I like to thank FAIR points and especially Chris and Sarah for inviting me and hosting the webinar. And I have put the uh, relevant document link to the uh, relevant document in the slides. And should you be interested in learning more? And I'm also interested to learn your quality use case and feedback on the guidelines, which is the uh, leaving document. And again, the slides um, are published in the Zunodu, the, and the link is in the chat. Um, How's my um, timing, Chris? Do you, I have a couple more minutes? Yeah, you have you have a couple more minutes. Yeah, you're on okay. way on time. <laughs> great, great. So I'm looking forward to the discussion. Um, Chris mentioned that maybe uh, some some uh, thought on how this group can utilize the um, guidelines, and uh, so. What I have here, um, it's um, you know probably requires additional discussion, but um, my question is to um, assuming you have assessed the fairness of data holdings, and then what? Um, how do you provide information to your end users, and do they know what you have assessed, how you have assessed, mm -hmm. what you what you have obtained and how the result can be readily integrated um, across tools or uh, systems. So um, the very basically one, uh, basic one is to start with describing the set data holding that you have assessed or to be assessed use the data guideline one and select a model, or if you have developed a model yourself and describe the model following the guideline two and you document the relevant information in a structured searchable machine actionable metadata record and hopefully following the domain and international or national international standards and utilizing guidelines three. And then they also document that in a human readable uh, report that's a citable and uh, it's structured, we recommend to be structured. So actually machine can also um, be disseminate the report itself following guideline four. And then finally describing and uh, disseminating the uh, information online, utilize guideline five. Um, by doing so, you help to ensure the fairness assessment process is transparent and the relevant information such as quality attributes and my search process result are documented and findable machine actionable, human readable and reusable. And they're also available online and comprehensively described easily understood and readily reusable. So I'm going to stop here. 
Uh, thank you, um, everybody, for listening. Thanks. Uh, yeah, that that was uh, that was really. I I <laughs> was noting a question, but then didn't realize actually there are some questions already in the uh, in the um, Hack MD, and I don't. I don't know if some of you were able to get to the HackMD, but if you can't, um, the notepad that we've been using, you can you can ask them in the in the chat here in Zoom, and we can copy them over. That's that's fine as well. Um, but um, yeah, you have some questions. Uh, um, so one of them, I think you mentioned the various groups that you were working with, um, and it and the question I think there is how how does one get involved in some of those groups? I think your sort of D, DQI efforts, right? Like um sounds like you might have some use cases <laughs> yeah um so for the for the working group um we are currently in the maintenance group however we are, are uh, welcome anybody to participate and you are more than welcome to um, contact me if you are interested in participate in improving the uh, the guidelines especially for the discipline is uh, diversity. For the use case, um, the OGC Ivana is uh, 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 co-chair of the uh, OGC Data Quality Domain Working Group. And you can contact her or you can contact me and I I can um, con you know, uh, forward your uh, request to her. Hope that answers the question. Yeah, yeah. Um... Your email's right there too. That's great. Um, yeah, and then uh, can you see some of the questions? The second one is... Um, okay, let me mentioned... stop sharing so I can... Do you want her to read or you want me to stop sharing? So I can oh, I can read job. you. Yeah, I, I can read uh, okay. to you, but you can you can stop okay. sharing. I literally, I'm following that plane following, going around the world. <laughs> I keep looking at it, uh, but... Um, 